Welcome to CBR TV. I'm Jonah Wylan on the CBR yacht at Comic Con International. Sitting to my right are two of the stars from the CW's Arrow, Stephen Amell and Emily Bett Richards. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. All right, Stephen, look, I don't like going to the gym. I hate going to the gym. I freak out about the gym. I don't like going to the gym. I wake up in the morning, it's like, oh, God, do I have to go to the gym today? No, I don't want to go to the gym. You have to do it every day. I know that because of the show, but forget that. You have one of the most demanding jobs on television, if you ask me. Would you agree with that? Yes, I would. <laughs> well, I'm I'm also physically also demanding. Also I, I would I would put my schedule for a season up against anybody. Yeah. Like a like a throwdown. Like a, mm -hmm. some like a, we'll have a third party competition actually compute the amount of hours and the amount of preparatory time, et cetera, et cetera, that I put in, I will put it up against anybody. Because, look, I wake up somewhere and it's like, I'm not going to the gym. You don't have a choice. The gym is your job. Yeah, no, but... And but how it, do you gear yourself up, though, Because it's days? Because it's my job. Okay. And because I have a massive and ever-present fear of failure. Do you really? And I'm incredibly competitive. She's heard me drop super loud F-bombs and other <laughs> bombs that I'm not even comfortable explaining what we they are. We drop a lot of bombs. A lot of bombs are being dropped because I want everything to be great all the time. Okay. We actually had a scene, by the way, this doesn't happen very often, but we had a scene on, uh, it, was, it was last week, it was during the first episode, and we were unclear about something, and sometimes when you have a lot of background in a scene, it's tough to keep them, keep them quiet. Sure. <laughs> and, and we were blocking out the scene, and I stopped and I went, no, it just, it, it just, and all of a sudden, you could hear a pin drop. Yeah. Really? Yeah, so it I'm, I'm just so he's a little dead scary. Dead quiet. No, not scary. It was just. Well, really... he wanted to hear what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, they wanted, they wanted to know if he was going to be scary. Oh, okay. And they were waiting. They were, were all looking at each other, like going a, like, "Yeah, they're <laughs> waiting for a scandalous <laughs> diva moment." <Yeah. laughs> Throws his water bottle at the camera. Shoes are coming off. You didn't no. give him one, did you? No. <laughs> no, I just I always that. want I I I'm on set every day, and when I was a kid growing up, I would sit and I would read the sports section. I was most interested in statistics and the standings. Mm -hmm. Like I would know the batting average leaders and I would have this encyclopedic knowledge of that. That weird trait, the Will Hunting-esque knowledge of that section has transferred over to the show. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing the show, I know that if a scene calls back, I'll be able to say, well, this calls back to episode five, and we did this and that and the other huh. thing. So I'm just, I'm very, very particular. Huh. And sometimes when you're rushing through a day, sometimes things grind to a halt. And that's, that's, that's perfectly <laughs> human. You know, it's funny you mention that, because I was talking to my staff earlier. I said, you know, it'd be kind of fun if we just did a trivia thing to see how well they know their characters. And I think you'd win. You would win at, at Arrow Trivia. That's correct. Well, yeah. Emily, let's talk about <laughs> your character. You have to be able to win at your own character. You should be able to you win. Should be able I, to I win can win at your, your own character, character too. You'd be surprised how many how many TV people. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> there needs to be an Arrow Trivial Pursuit edition, and that's going to be what you guys do at night now. Exactly right. <laughs> Emily, that's actually be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to play Jenga in the Foundry. That's all I want to do. Oh my God. Emily, talk about y your character, because you know y you came in. It's kind of a little one-off thing, and it kind of exploded and took on a life of its own. She, yeah, she took over. Uh, were you expecting that? I mean, obviously, you're probably hopeful. Like, ah, I'd like to be a series regular, sure, but oh, it wasn't. It wasn't even in my thought process. It was like, yes, they're. You know, I'm so glad that they want me on the show, and then they brought me back, and then all of a sudden, this word regular was getting thrown around, and I mean, I was not really focused on the word or the title because I'd never been in that situation before. Um, but yeah, it's exciting, it's thrilling, it's it's busy, I get to work with this guy, he's all right. <laughs> how quickly, because you see it on screen and I see it with you two right now, how quickly did you and Steven and David all kind of click? How, how quickly did that chemistry come together? Was it instant? I, may I? You may. The first time that I came around the corner, because we barely rehearsed, we just did a quick run through. The first time that I came around the corner and Emily reacted the way that she did, the smile that you saw from me was a total break of character. It was a totally legitimate, heartfelt, this is really funny. And I think to that point in the show, I'm not sure that Oliver had smiled. And so for me, personally, it was just an immediate, I remember talking to producers like right after we shot that scene saying, that was a really fun scene to shoot. Emily was great, and she should come back. Wow. 
That's pretty cool. It's nice to have him in your corner. Yeah. No, that was a fun By day. By the way, I I'm 2% of the reason, maybe 1%. 99% rests here and sure. doing a good job. But it can't hurt to have, you know, the series star on your side when, when you're coming in, walking into oh, the show and you're, absolutely. Yeah, you weren't even there from the first episode. You're, like, you're, you're an invading army know, of sorts. I'm <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm invading, I'm an imposter, but, but you're, you're I'm part here is, to stay. Your part is pretty special. I, I, you know, you hear these stories in Hollywood about there aren't smart roles for women in film mm -hmm. and TV at times and stuff like that, and there, there's just too few of them. But in your case, yeah, I think that's right. In your case, you really are the smartest character in the room. You know, as as smart as 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 Diggle is, as smart <laughs> as uh, Oliver is, you are the smartest girl in the room, and that's got to be a real pleasure, isn't it? She she's smart in in very <laughs> she's smart at a lot of things, but I mean, she does struggle with obviously social aspects and that sort of thing. There's different, <laughs> there's different parts of IQ she's not flourishing in, or she's not a genius in. But um, I. I love playing someone who's so intelligent and her intellect is almost, um, it kind of bombards her sense of self in the social situation yeah. as well because it's so apparent. Yeah. And I think, I love playing her. I love the words she gets to say. Yeah. Ultraviolet and like, oh gosh, there was, oh, there's so many lines that I've stumbled over in our scenes that I've been like, like take that back because <laughs> it's so hard to get out with her rapid pacing. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Steven, you know, look, I think what's really fascinating about your character is in the popularity of the show. And you know what? I just I gotta stop for a second. I totally screwed up, by the way. I have a Starling City baseball cap that I was gonna wear, a Starling City Rockets one, and I totally screwed it up for this entire interview. We should throw this out, don't you think? No, that's okay. You have one. We don't have one. Oh, really? You could debut it right now. It's not like we've seen it before. I've it, never seen that cap. Before. You can buy it off me. You got, really? You got like you got. I'll trade. You know what? I'll trade. I'll trade you. I'll trade you. I have stuff. What do you have? Oh, man. I like this negotiating on I camera. Have, this is uh, this is interesting. Well, I mean, first of all, let's 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 remember that I can get a Starling City Rockets cap <laughs> like, <laughs> like that, okay? It's true. So I'm not necessarily going to bring out the big guns, but all right. I mean, if there's a particular thing on the show that you like, or maybe I could give you like an off-camera spoiler, like you could ask one question. Actually, no, that we wouldn't a, work. No, you'll be in big trouble. That's arrows. a slippery slope. We have, have a lot, a lot of, arrows. of arrows. We do have a lot, of, have arrows. A lot of arrows. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to talk to uh, Mark Guggenheim about this. We'll see what we're gonna have to work. We're gonna work on this. But getting back to you for a second, uh, what I think is very interesting about Arrow and its popularity is that Superman is the DC universe. Batman is the DC universe. But in, in a lot of ways, Arrow, because of its popularity, you've become another face of the DC universe more than even say Green Lantern, which struggled at the box office. But here, Arrow is going into a second season. Does that? You talked about being a perfectionist earlier. Does that pressure get to you, or does that just help drive you even more? Because you really are the face of DC Entertainment in a lot of ways. Now. It's uh, my idea for the show has always been: let's make it an honest representation of a very human, very fallible character. And you know, I try to bring that into work every day. I try to have fun every with every scene. I try to play every scene without ego. I try not to, my favorite part of season one reading, it wasn't my favorite scene to shoot because it hurt, but one of my favorite scenes to read was when the Dark Archer just kicks the crap out of me yeah. in episode nine. Yeah, great stuff. Because that was the promise of the pilot. That, and that was, the, that, was the, that was what Diggle said to me when he joined on. Look, you're, you're getting into this. It's going to be problematic. You're going to risk your life, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to get yourself killed. And I came so close so many times. So I, I don't feel I don't feel any pressure other than just trying to make the most realistic show possible. As long as we are driving towards that line, and we do this all the time where we'll have a stunt. A stunt will be a little elaborate and, and it'll be a it'll be a big showpiece. And we'll come in and we'll try to find ways to dress it down. We'll try to find ways to make it less fancy, to make it more practical, to make it more linear. Mm -hmm. And people really respond to that stuff on the show. So I'm really happy with how it's done. I'm really happy that people have reacted so well, but I think it's because we're doing our best to take a really a fantastical story and a comic book character and superheroes and arrows and villains and make it as real and honest as possible. That's awesome. I, I enjoy the show, and I'll be honest, 
it's not necessarily my kind of show. I'm the Breaking Bad guy. I like the gritty dramas. Well, I'm the we're the, mm -hmm. I'm the Breaking Bad guy. Are I you? love Breaking Bad. Yeah, <laughs> great shows. But you know, what's so wonderful about this show is the mythology. I love the flashback stuff, and it, it, it's. It, but most importantly, it's the characters. And you three with David are a lot of fun to watch together. And I think that's kind of what's helped ground this show. Whereas maybe some other shows of a similar ilk maybe didn't connect with me or connect with audiences because that character interaction, that relationship you guys all have with your mother, with your sister, is really, really strong. And I think that speaks volumes to the chemistry you guys all have and how that's developed on the show. Thank so, you. Thank you so much for coming out. Really appreciate you coming uh, to the CBR Yacht here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jonah Weiland and this is CBR TV.